do you recall at any time during the meeting with Sheriff Peterson there being anyone else present besides yourself, uh, Sergeant Colburn, and Sheriff Peterson? I don't recall. Do you recall whether the meeting stayed in Sheriff Peterson's office as opposed to moving anywhere else? I don't think I've ever had a conversation with the sheriff that didn't stay in his office. I mean, we never left the office and went somewhere else. Okay. Uh, do you recall whether Sheriff Peterson took any notes of what you were saying? I don't recall. Um, do you recall whether what you were saying was recorded in any fashion? No. No, it wasn't, or no, you don't recall? I don't believe it was, but I don't recall specifically. When... Uh, you and Sergeant Colburn were there. Did you report what Sergeant Colburn had said to you, or did you simply ask Sergeant Colburn to tell the sheriff what Sergeant Colburn had told you? I don't know exactly how it went down. Uh, usually, if I take someone to talk to a supervisor, I usually lead into it with a quick summary of what it was and then let someone else explain it. Sure. And that's, I mean, again, that's probably what would have happened based on your own experience and practice. It's probably what happened. Okay. Uh, it certainly would not be the case that uh, Sergeant Colburn would not be allowed to speak to the sheriff. No. I mean, that's the point of his being there, correct? Correct. So that if the sheriff has questions, he can follow them up with, with uh, Mr. Colburn. Correct. Um, and uh, do you have any recollection as to how long the meeting lasted? You know, I don't, other than it was probably very short. Mm -hmm. Do you have a recollection of anybody saying anything in particular? Other than the sheriff said, give me a statement as to what you just told me. Okay. That's how this came about. Setting the report aside and talking only about the incident described in the report, that is a contact from some other law enforcement agency about a person in custody for an assault and wondering if that person was involved in an assault that was prosecuted earlier, that was going on earlier in Manitowoc County. Was there any conversation about that general subject matter that you can recall having with anybody else? No. You ever, ever talked to any other people from Brown County about it or any other Brown County law enforcement agency, including, for example, the City of Green Bay Police Department? No. Or Ash Wabanon or anybody else? No, sir. Okay. Um, so, uh, again, I think, I think I'm, I'm approaching beating the dead horse, but I, need, <laughs> I just need to make sure that, that uh, the horse is, in fact, dead. There is not any more information that you have right now today about the subject matter of the statement contained in 125 than you had at the time you prepared 125. Is that true? That's all I have. Okay. You had some conversation with Sergeant Colburn in which presumably you told each other about this process that you're involved in here today. Yes, sir. That right. Uh, do you recall whether you contacted him or he contacted you? I believe he contacted me. Is he still with the Sheriff's Department? Yes. Okay. So you're both active members right. of the Sheriff's Department today. And uh, when he approached you, uh, however the contact occurred, whether it was he to you or you to him, uh, was it limited to the question of the existence of a subpoena? Or did you discuss... This, this document, did you discuss the fact that uh, the events described in 125 had occurred? Did you have any other conversation? No, not really. Um, he had mentioned to me that uh, he had gotten some kind of contact that he had to make a deposition, and he asked me if I had any contact, and I said yes. I said, I have no idea what it's about. I wasn't even hired at the time. And uh, he mentioned something about a phone call. And it still didn't register to me uh, until he came out and he said, no, it's about that information I gave you about a phone call I got. Oh, I said, oh, okay. That's how I remembered it. And did he say anything about having uh, 
an improved recollection or or in uh, increased amounts of information? No. Today, as opposed to what he had back then? Not to my knowledge. And then the statement says, Dvorak described Avery as such a dirty man that every time he would come to the jail, the sheriff's deputies would have to make Avery take a shower. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Did you tell that to Ms. Strauss? Possibly, but not in those words. In what words? Thank Do you, you remember the words you told her? I'm going to object to the form of the question foundation. This is improper. There's nothing to impeach it. Do you remember the words you used when you described Mr. Avery as a dirty man to Ms. Strauss? Objection. Yeah. You can answer. I do not remember specifically, but reading this, this is not my words. Well, if you don't remember, how can you tell us that? Objection argumentative. Go ahead, ma'am. You can answer. I would say I do not speak or talk, converse in this kind of verbiage. So you think Ms. Strauss must have been mistaken when she recorded this statement as being something that you told her? Object to the form of the question. Yeah, I don't Is that correct? You can answer. I believe she may have taken the words out of context. What context? putting her verbiage into the statement. Why would you think she would do that? Objection calls for speculation. You can answer. It would be a matter of verbal perception. The next paragraph, first full paragraph on the page, Dvorak described Avery as an abusive man. Did you tell that to Ms. Strauss? Possibly. Do you remember whether you did or not? No, I do not. And it says, Dvorak said that she did not know if Avery was abusive towards his wife, but Dvorak stated that she has observed Avery chain his son with a metal chain in the front yard. Did you say that to Ms. Strauss? Yes, I believe so. Had you observed Avery chain his son with a metal chain in the front yard? Yes, I did. On how many occasions? One that I know of. Then it says Dvorak said this was Avery's way of babysitting his children. Did you say that to Ms. Strauss? Possibly. How did you know that? That was an observation. Based on that one occasion? Yes. Then it says, it did not come as a surprise that Avery could commit a crime such as this. Did you say that to Ms. Strauss? Possibly this does not sound like my verbiage. You just don't remember whether you said that or not? No, I do not. Dvorak said this assault did fit Avery's pattern of previous crimes. Did you say that to Ms. Strauss? Possibly, but again, this is not my verbiage. What pattern of previous crimes? Check to the form. Yeah, and foundation. Well, if you possibly said this to her, what's the pattern of previous crimes you were referring to? Form of question and foundation. You can answer. In the answer. His interaction with society, uh, setting of the cat on fire. 
Anything else you remember? Not at this time. You believe setting a cat on fire would be a previous crime that would suggest that somebody engaged in a rape? Objective Ms. Dates her testimony. She said you may answer, ma'am. John, stop trying to tell her how to testify. Well, then you stop repeating her testimony inappropriately, counsel, and I'll stop objecting yeah. to that. Yeah. We'll go see the judge about all of this. I, I'd appreciate that. Okay. Would you read the question back, please? Sure. You believe setting a cat on fire would be a previous crime that would suggest that somebody engaged in a rape? Objective. Stand by. Okay, would we play the previous question back in the record? You can answer. Again, your question is unclear. What's unclear about it? Anyone is possible of doing any type of crime. You had conversations in uh, 2003 about that subject, did you not? Right. Uh, and you talked at the time with uh, uh, Sergeant Colbert? Yes. And you talked at the time with, uh, is it just Deputy Link? It's Lieutenant. Lieutenant Link, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, and uh, they told you uh about these events that had occurred in 1995 as they recalled them, correct yes do you remember who else was involved in those conversations between you and uh well let's start with mr colburn no i believe uh, uh both andy colborn and james link came to my office at the same time and with no one else correct and you were with no one else correct so it was just the three of you yes okay and you talked about this uh, this matter of the 1995 telephone contact from an outside agency to the Manitowoc County Sheriff. Correct? Yes. And uh, what did they tell you? Let's, let's start with Sergeant Colbert. What did, what did he tell you? Had occurred? He said when he was working in the jail, he had received a, call, a phone call, I believe, from a detective in Brown County that uh, he had a suspect who said that he had assaulted a person in Manitowoc County and somebody else uh, was in prison. Uh, and that's about it. He said he uh, uh, referred it to a detective and heard nothing of it after that. In, in, uh, in 2003, you learn that one of the things that's happened is that not only did Mr. Avery not commit the crime that he had been convicted of and incarcerated for, but there was uh, pretty solid evidence that somebody else had done it, correct? And and in particular, Gregory Allen had done it. True. Correct. And uh, did you, at that stage, do anything in your department to try to figure out how that had happened? No. Did you conduct any internal investigation of your own department to see how this had taken place? No, none of the uh, people that were involved in the case in the investigative part were, the, any, were there. Uh, so does that mean that you had considered conducting an investigation, but then decided after you had identified the people that were involved and learned that they were no longer there, that there would be no point in the investigation? Correct. Uh, but that is a mental process you went through. That is, you considered conducting an investigation. You determined the identities of the people who were involved. You determined their present connections with the Sheriff's Department. You learned that they were no longer with the Sheriff's Department. 
and then decided there would be no investigation. From the question. Is that true? Correct. Um, when did you go through that process? Would have been about the same time uh, district attorney told me that Steve was being released. Uh, and did you discuss that with the uh, district attorney Roar? No. He's a district attorney who told you that, I take it, correct? Correct. Uh, did you discuss it with anybody in the district attorney's office? No. Did you discuss it with anybody on the Manitowoc County Board? No. Discuss it with anybody in the world? No. Make any memos about it? No. In your very first conversation with Tom Kosurek about this matter back in July of 1985, uh, you indicated that you were told to arrest Steve Avery for attempted first degree homicide, Is that right? Correct. There's no reference of sexual assault? Not at that point. None. I mean, you, you had no idea what the circumstances were of the attempted first degree homicide, whether there was a weapon, whether this guy should be considered armed. I mean, anything like that? No. Um, and you had no idea who the uh, who the victim was. Oh, I knew that at that time. I knew the victim. You did. I knew who she was. Okay, so so you knew he was. I mean, the information you had gotten from the prior shift commander would that have involved sexual assault? It could have. Um, but. Again, your directions from Kasurik have nothing to do with sexual assault in the first conversation. It's all about homicide. Correct. And later, when you're at the jail, um, or at least after you've been, after you've arrived at the jail, you have a conversation uh, again with Kasurik in which he is talking about getting these samples. Correct. Correct. And the samples include pubic hair, right? Correct. And based on your experience, you realize that you don't ordinarily obtain pubic hair samples unless there's an allegation of some form of sexual contact or sexual assault. Sure. Correct. Um, do you recall whether or not Tom Kasurik said anything in that second conversation about sexual assault? I don't recall anything specific, no. At any rate, uh, what the subject matter was of this person's call was uh, a statement apparently made to the caller by a person who was in the caller's custody. Is that correct? You know, we're going back to 94 or 95. I'm a sure. little gray on exactly. And you can you can use your own report, Exhibit 138, to refresh mm -hmm. your recollection if that helps you. I don't know if the person I gathered yes that they had someone in custody. I don't know if this person had commented directly to the person who called me, or had commented to other people within that jurisdiction, and this eventually got to my caller. But but the detective indicated that there was a person in custody who had made a statement about a Manitowoc County offense, correct? Yes. Okay. And what that person in custody had said was that he had committed an assault in Manitowoc County and someone else was in jail for it, correct? Yes, sir. And that much you're, you're pretty sure of, correct? Yes. Uh, I mean, that's that's a... That's a significant event. Right. That's right? what stood out in my mind. Sure. And uh, you knew by September 12th, 2003, that Stephen Avery is someone who had been in jail for an assault that he had been convicted of, correct? Had been in jail. Yes. He, had, he was recently released. By yes. Mm-hmm.
Okay, so you gave the person the number and then attempted to transfer the call. And do you know whether the call went through to the other detective? I, I don't know. Okay. I didn't hear uh, somebody pick up, but as soon as the phone rang, I would have hung it up. Okay, because at that stage, again, you've given the person the contact information if he chooses to follow up, correct? Yes, sir. Um, did you ever make any inquiries of anybody in the detective bureau to find out whether they had received such a call? No, sir. Or did you ever hear any feedback from anybody about no, whether they'd gotten such a call? No, sir. Okay, so that's that's what's going on in, in 2003, correct? No, the call... I'm sorry, that's what's going on in 94, 95. Yes, sir. You then, in 2003, following the publicity that we've already discussed relating to Mr. Allen and Mr. Avery, uh, and you're concerned that perhaps the caller that was calling was speaking about Mr. Allen and Mr. Avery. True? I was wondering about that, yes. Sure. Uh, you brought that up to someone else, correct? Yes, sir. And to whom did you bring that up? To Lieutenant Link. And uh, you and Lieutenant Link had a conversation about it? Yes, sir. And in that conversation, is it safe to say that you told him what's reflected in uh, Exhibit 138? Yes, sir. Uh, there was also a conversation that followed that in which uh, you spoke to Sheriff Peterson, correct? Yes, sir. And do you recall that uh, um, Lieutenant Link was there as well? When I spoke with Sheriff Peterson? Yes, was he or not? Do you no, know? he was not. He was not. Okay. Who who all was there when you talked to Sheriff Peterson? Do you remember? I, I don't recall who was in the room. I remember coming into work, Sheriff Peterson was downstairs where our patrol division is, mm -hmm. and he... I got the impression he was waiting for me to come into work. There were other people coming in and out of the room, but I don't recall. Who. Do you know what it is that gave you the impression he was waiting for you? I and mean, did he come right up to you or ask you to come with him? Or I usually don't have contact with the sheriff, you know, so <laughs> okay. that's what gave me the impression he was waiting for me. And when, uh, uh, when you and he connected that day, uh, what happened? I mean, did you say something to him? Did he say something to you? No, he... He initiated the conversation by uh, uh, saying uh, he had spoken with Lieutenant Link and he felt that it would be in the best interest of Lieutenant Link and myself and the Sheriff's Department. I would suppose that if I was to give him a statement on what on the gist of our conversation or what we had discussed. And uh, I asked for clarification on that, you know, and he goes, well, what you discussed about uh, a telephone call that you received while you're working in, in the jail. And I said, okay. okay. And before I went out on patrol, mm -hmm. I provided this statement. Um, did you ever have a conversation with Tom Kosorek about why he lost confidence in you? I asked him, why did you do this? And he said, because I lacked tact. And did you respond to that? Yes, I said, Tom, tact on your department was the ability to smile at somebody's face while you stabbed them in the back, which was a tactless thing to say. <laughs> and, and what did he say to that? I don't think he responded. Okay. Any further conversations you've had with Larry Conrad about this case, apart from the one you've told us about after he testified? Well, before, I mean, again, like, what's happening, who, you know, what's the story, what's going on. Uh, the question of where the hair came from, nobody seems to know. Um, 
where what hair came from. The hair of the DNA came from. No one seems to know where that came from. Who's, who's discussed where the hair came from for the DNA? I did. Okay. With whom? Sheriff Surik, Larry Conrad, Don Belts. How many times with Kasorik? A couple of times, maybe. How many times with Conrad? Perhaps a couple. And with Bells? Maybe once. Did any one or more of you in the course of those conversations doubt the validity of the DNA examination? We don't know where it came from. So? We're, we're detectives. We want to know where the evidence came from. Just because something exists doesn't mean it's probative. I want to know where it came from. Okay. Was there any speculation about where it might have come from? You can answer. Uh, they said that someone put a, a, a blanket or a towel on her at the scene. Could have been a transfer from that. Don't know. I don't know where it came from. Did any one or more of you, including Sheriff Kosorek, make any effort to find out um, by any means whatsoever where the hair came from? Objective form of the question. You can answer. I asked the county's attorneys when I was questioned at one time, and they basically refused to say anything. Says, okay. He goes on and he says, referring to you, he then told me that in 95 or 96, Andy Colburn had told Tom Kusorek, former Manitowoc County Sheriff, that an officer from Brown County had told Colburn that Allen and not Avery might have actually committed the Bernstein assault. Okay? That, that is what Exhibit 124 says, correct? That's correct. Okay. Did you, in fact, tell that to Douglas Jones? I don't recall. All right. Does seeing this document, 124, refresh your recollection? No. All right. Do you have any reason to disbelieve what this document says you told Doug Jones? Um, I recall Coburn saying something to me, and I might have been said something to him on the side. I don't know if Tom Kasurik's name came into it. I don't recall that. All right. Anything else? With respect to that sentence. Again, that's all I can recall. So you knew about Gregory Allen in 1995 or no, 96 no, because I, Tom Colburn told you. No, he didn't tell me that in 1995-96. Okay. He then. said he had the conversation in 95-96. All right. I didn't hear about it till in passing talking to Andy at one time, something being said within, probably within a matter of a couple of, uh, uh, a couple, three months of, of this conversation occurring. What happened within a couple of three months of this conversation? Andy making a comment to me about this. Because I said, this thing comes up with conversations. And he, he may have said something that it would not necessarily have been important to me that I would file it away for future memory and might have just made a an aside comment at the end of a telephone conversation. But I did not receive that information in 95, 96. At that time, I was chief investigator and would have done something. I would have, and then I made this comment. I probably asked him, was Link, who was my replacement, aware of this? And that's how I would imagine I said he, that Detective Link was aware. He was not that until he didn't take command of, of that bureau until 2003. 